Hi girls and boys, Miss Booksy here, and today we're going to revisit two versions of one of my favorite stories, Jack and the Beanstalk. In both versions of the story, the giant wants something very much and steals as much of it as they can find. Can you remember what these giants want so badly? And let me know in the comments. That will help us all remember the story as we get back into it. Let's go. So Jackie, that's me. I lived with my mom. To make our living, we had a cow whose milk we sold for money. Let's just say we weren't rich. One day, Bessie stopped making milk. She was an old cow, ready for retirement. Maybe she wanted to move to Florida. She had some friends down there, fulfilling their milk bucket list. Mom told me we would have to sell Bessie. We had no choice. So the next day, I led my dear old friend, Bessie, to the town square. <laughs> On the way, we ran into an old wolf who told me he'd love to take Bessie. May I offer an interesting trade for your bullvine friend there? No, sir. I need to sell her. Okay. I guess you don't want these magic beans. What kind of beans? Because I don't like lima beans or pinto beans. I said magic beans, kid. They're totally magic and are worth more than you're ever going to get for that old dried up cow. If you're not interested in these very valuable, very magical, exotic, and definitely totally real beans, I'll find someone else. I'll take them. Wow, with magic beans, I could, I could. What? Oh no, I didn't ask how they worked. Oh man. I got home and hope my mom would just forget about the whole selling Bessie thing. I would just play it cool. Yeah. Magic beans? There's no such thing as magic. She was right. What were we supposed to do with three little beans? I tossed the beans out the window and headed up to bed. But that night, something amazing, dare I say magical happened. A giant beanstalk had grown outside our window. What else do you do when you see a giant beanstalk? You climb it, duh. At the very tip top, just above the clouds, I saw a yard and a house. A big house. I was hungry for breakfast, and I figured a big house like that would have some really big snacks. No puny fun-sized candy bars here. I let myself into the giant house. Gosh, who lived here? A whole NBA team? There was a maid inside. She was normal size. What was she doing in such a giant house? I'll give you some table scraps and then off with you. She gave me a bit of bread. It looked like a big crumb, like a crumb from a giant sandwich. I stuffed the big bread crumb into my knapsack and just as I was about to leave, I heard. Fee, fee, foo, thinner. I think I smell my dinner. Ah, I hid, and I just saw the most giantest giant imaginable come in. Rub roll, was I for dinner? Also not to nitpick, but it's technically breakfast time, but back to the issue at hand. There was a giant. He started to count a bunch of gold coins. He must have had like a million, nay, a jillion. I waited until the giant got up to go to the bathroom to take a giant bath. I grabbed a sack of gold and hightailed it to the beanstalk. <sighs> Listen, I know stealing is wrong, but I thought maybe it would be okay because he had so many coins. He wouldn't mind. So I showed my mother. Young lady, you march back up there and give that man back his gold. There's no such thing as giants. So the next day, I went back up the beanstalk. I decided I would just leave the coins by the doorstep. And I saw the strangest thing, a golden goose, and it was laying golden eggs. Oh, Mom would never believe this. So I took a picture with my iPhone. <laughs> She'd have to believe me now. <laughs> I picked up one egg to get a few shots with me holding it. And then the goose started honking like a traffic jam. I had to scoot, oh boy. Then I heard, Fee, five, four, this. Who the heck is bothering me, goose? Oh, I had to get out of there. Why was I messing around on a giant's turf? I ran for it and skedaddled down the stalk. <laughs> Unfortunately, I still had the egg. Oh, blarg. Mom saw it and told me to return it. There's no 
such thing as a golden goose. That egg is just a decoration. I've seen one just like it at Macy's. But I had an iPhone photo. So up I went. I was going to just set down the egg and leave. Simple as that. But then I saw the coolest treasure ever. A golden guitar. It started playing by itself. Cool. Wait a second, I recognize this guitar. I had seen a TV news story about Professor Skyens, a nice but strange inventor slash scientist guy who lived in our town. He had made a golden guitar. It was a gift for the mayor. It was on the news because it had been stolen. Wait a second, I'm not a thief. The giant's a thief! I was just gonna leave and call the police, but the guitar started playing again, loud. Darn rock and roll. I ran like a cheetah. That silly gold guitar was still twanging and riffing and totally shredding. My mom and some other townsfolk heard the racket and gathered around the beanstalk. Then my mom, one of the most gentle, nicest, sweetest little ladies in the world, she started chopping down the stalk with an axe. Wait till I get down there, Ma! I got close to the bottom and jumped. Just as she yelled, And thud. The giant fell. I told the townspeople about the stolen treasure up the beanstalk. The police arrested the giant and the fire department extended their ladders all the way up to the sky to go get the rest of the gold stuff. The mayor gave me a reward and we used it to buy a new cow. And my mom finally believed me that giants, golden geese, and magic are all real. It was a happy ending. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Jack. Jack lived with his mom in a small town where nothing exciting ever happened. It was so boring that the number one pastime was watching paint dry. Every Saturday, Jack's mom would send him to the market in a neighboring town to get groceries. This particular Saturday, Jack went and spent all the grocery money on just three little beans. These are no ordinary beans, they're magic beans. Do you like magic? Yeah! Well then you're gonna love these beans. And just like that, he snatched Jack's money and was gone in a puff of smoke. He did disappear like a magician, so the beans must be magical. Jack ran home super duper excited about the magic beans. He showed his mom. She didn't believe in magic and she scolded Jack. Then she threw the beans right out the window. But good thing she did because that night, the beans grew into a giant beanstalk. It went all the way up to the sky. Just imagine, if they had grown like that inside the house, that would have been messy. This was the first exciting thing that had ever happened in their town, so everybody came to look. But Jack was the only one brave enough to climb up to the top. When he reached the very tip top, he saw a whole new world where everything was huge! It was like a place for giants! He felt so small here, he was the same size as a mouse! It was a little scary being that small, but he had to go explore. Whoa! They had a giant TV? It was like a movie theater screen. Cool! Just then the floor started to rumble. Was it an earthquake? Eek! It was a real live giant! Fee fi fo fum! I smell the feet of a little one! Hey! My feet don't stink! Then he remembered he was very tiny compared to this giant. So maybe now wasn't the best time to argue. But the giant had already heard him. Although to him it sounded more like this. And just to be perfectly honest, Jack's feet were a little stinky. But that's beside the point. The giant had found Jack. He ran to the beanstalk. He slid down faster than that one time when he went down the big water slide at Six Flags. Phew, he made it but not before the giant saw the beanstalk, and that was bad. That was very, very bad. You see, the giants who lived up in the clouds had never had a way to get down to the earth below where all the people live, but now they had a big beanstalk to climb up and down whenever they wanted. Now Jack's town was like the giant's downstairs rec room, full of snacks and amusement. Luckily, the giants were vegetarians, so no one had to worry about being eaten. But they did have to worry about being smashed. The giants loved Jack's little town. They ran around and played tag, which caused a lot of rumbling and shaking and made a very big mess. The giants also thought the humans were adorable and they started to treat them like little pets. 
putting funny sweaters on them and naming them things like Mr. Fluffy and Bingo. Pretty little pet. We have to get rid of these giants. Fee fi fo fum, I tickle you on your tum tum. Jack and the other townsfolk held a meeting to discuss how to get rid of these giants. I say we build a giant trap. That would take weeks. How about we all just move? We're going to have to cut down the beanstalk. Chopping down the beanstalk does no good if the giants are still down here, squashing all the real estate, and eating all the corn. And calling me Fluffykins. Yeah, they'd be down here forever, no thanks. Okay, okay, so we just have to get them all back up there at once. I have a plan. We're going to need a very big saw, a parachute, and all the cute stuff we can find. Jack's plan started with all the townspeople hiding in their basement. Jack put on the most annoyingly adorable stuff the giant had been making people wear. He put on a fuzzy sweater with a smiley face that lit up, a little hat with bells, bunny slippers, pants that had my little ponytail, and a bib that said, I'm the baby, gotta love me. Then he ran out into the town square and yelled out, Hey, look how cute I am. I am so cute. Whoever catches me gets to keep me as their pet forever. Well, the giants thought he was so adorable. They went to scoop him up, but he was too fast. Catch me if you can. The giggling giants chased Jack all through town, past Jack's house, and right up the beanstalk. He ran around until the very last giant followed him up the stalk. Once they were all there, he ran to the edge of the giant world and jumped. This is where the parachute came in handy. Jack sailed through the sky, and the townspeople took that as their cue to chop. The mayor shouted, Mr. Lumberjack, tear down that stalk. The townspeople cheered as the stalk teetered and wobbled. The lumberjack yelled out, Timber! And the big beanstalk crashed to the ground. Jack landed, and everyone hoisted him up on their shoulders, chanting, Yay, Jack! Yay, Jack! The giant beanstalk turned the town into a huge tourist attraction. Looky loos from all over the world wanted to come and see the big stock and the brave hero who defeated the giants. The end. Boy, when these giants want something, they just take it. And that's not very nice. In the first story, the giants stole everything made of gold. And in the second story, the giants were obsessed with cuteness and stole the townspeople. Well, luckily Jack was very smart and had help from his friends and family. And that's all for our stories today, kids. But click over here and you can see many, many more. See ya!